I'm known to take legal action against party hoppers. Death toll in Indonesia quakes, tsunami soars to 832. Hello and good afternoon. You're watching News on 2 and I'm Amin Carlos. Amno President Dato Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid Hamidi has emphasized that legal action will be taken against Barisan National's elected representatives who leave the party. While well, he added that a line of lawyers have been appointed to look into the issue, although no names have been disclosed. Tindakan undang-undang telah dilakukan. Red saman telah dihantar. Jadi kita telah menyerahkan kepada uh, pasukan peguam uh, untuk uh, mengheret mereka dan melakukan tuntutan uh, menurut aspek perundangan yang memperuntukkan perkara-perkara yang berkaitan. Dr. Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid said this in a press conference soon after his winding up speech at the UMNO General Assembly in Kuala Lumpur. The matter came up when several UMNO elected representatives decided to leave the party a few months after the 14th general election. Well, meanwhile, still on the issue of party hoppers, Secretary General of Party Pribumi Bursatu Malaysia, Bursatu, Dato Marzuki Yahya, is not dismissing the possibility of more UMNO leaders jumping ship in an effort to join Bursatu. He, however, said no application has been received so far. Dato Marzuki said although the party is open to new members, those who apply will have to be thoroughly screened before they are accepted by the party. Kita akan buat saringan kepada uh, ahli-ahli parlimen ataupun yang bekas-bekas menteri sebelum ini yang pernah memegang jawatan tertinggi di dalam parti. Untuk masuk kalau mereka memohon untuk menyertai parti kita. Uh, jadi bukannya semestinya kita boleh terima sebulat suara kata mereka letak jawatan ataupun keluar parti ini hari dan besok masuk bersatu. No. Dia harus buat permohonan dan kita ada saringan kita sendiri. Datu Marzuki, who was also Deputy Foreign Minister, said this after launching the Bobora Shura distribution program for residents of Bandar Tun Razak in Kuala Lumpur. Well, no other reason other than to return to politics. And this was a comment given by Tan Sri Muhammad Isa Samad when asked about his decision to leave AMNO and contest as an independent candidate for the upcoming Port Dixon by-election. Tantri Mohamed Issa said it has always been his desire to contest in Port Dixon but never had the chance to do so. Kalau saya jadi alam no seperti saya sebut, parti mungkin, mungkin akan memecat saya. Jadi saya tak mahu menyusahkan parti pecat saya. Jadi lebih baik saya letak jawatan, berhenti daripada jadi ahli parti dan saya bertanding. Yang mana saya bertanding sebagai orang yang tak mempunyai parti. Itu, itu buat teramat saya. Tansri Mohamed Isa said this during his campaign rounds at Kampong Jima in Port Dixon. Well, meanwhile, Pakatan Harapan aims to boost the local economy in Port Dixon with a particular focus on the Bukit Palando area. And according to its candidate, Dr. Sri Anwar Ibrahim, Bukit Palando was chosen because he wanted to develop the place, create jobs and boost the local economy. On the second day of the campaign trial, well, or campaign trail, Dr. Sri Anwar was warmly welcomed by the constituents during a walkabout at the Port Dixon market yesterday. In his expressing his confidence to develop the constituency, the PKR president-elect pointed out that Port Dixon can grow better and several investors had already pledged to help out, well, even though he had not yet won the election. Dr. Sri Anwar also visited Masjid Jamik Pasir Panjang for a talk on Islamic affairs as well as the local market in the area. He was accompanied by the former Port Dixon MP, Daniel Balagopal Abdullah, and his daughter, Nurul Ilham Anwar. Aside from Dr. Sri Anwar, the Port Dixon by-election will be contested by six more candidates, including former Negeri Sembilan Menteri Besar, Tan Sri Muhammad Isa Abdul Samad, plus his former aide, Muhammad Saiful Bukhari Azlan. Well, a housewife was met with a surprise package when she discovered a newborn baby boy left in a compound in Banda Tase Putri, Rawang Selangor this morning. And according to Shohaida Saad, 43, she realized the presence of the baby when she went out to collect some things that her cousin had delivered about 6 a.m. Now, Shuhaida said she found the baby with its umbilical cord still attached, wrapped in a blanket under a black jacket. The infant was cold and hungry, so Shuhaida took him inside. Now, once a police report was lodged, the baby was then transferred to the nearest hospital for further checks. Police have urged the public 
or the clinic that delivered the baby to contact the nearest police station with any information to help with investigations. An outing to celebrate the end of their UPSR examinations turned into a tragedy for four friends when two of them drowned at the Boardwalk Lagoon in Sitiu Trungano yesterday. According to Sitiu Fire and Rescue Department Chief Mustafa Ismail, the body of Nur Hafizatul Nabiha Mama Jafar, 12, was found at 2.27 p.m., while Nur Kumaira Kastina Muhammad Nizam, 12, was found at 4 p.m. Near the area, they were reported to have drowned. Musafa said the two surviving friends, Nur Ain Najiha Abdul Rani and Aisha Shakira Ishak, were rescued by members of the public, plus a member of the water rescue team, PPDA unit, who happened to be at the scene when the tragedy occurred. Upon receiving the emergency call at 12.33 p.m., 25 men, including the PPDA team, rushed to the scene immediately. Musafa added that the bodies were found by the PPDA team at a depth of 30 feet below the river. And the four friends who were year six pupils from Sekolah Kebangsaan and Kampung Rahmat Sityu were on a picnic with the family of one of the victims. This was the second tragedy in the area in the past two months. Well, a 46-year-old man faces the death sentence after he was arrested on 28th September for being in possession of 46 slabs of compressed ganja worth over 112,000 ringgit in a raid at Kampung Permatang Pasir, Kota Kuala Muda in Kedah. Kuala Muda Police Chief ACP Adzli Abu Shah said during the raid, police seized 25 slabs of compressed drugs under a mattress in a room, 12 in a box and 8 in a plastic bag in front of the room and 1 in the living room. We have been here for a long time, for a long time. The name of it and the location of it is the city of Seberang Perai Utara, the city of Kuala Muda. Kalau ikut bekalan, siasatan awal dia kata dia dapat daripada lokal. Maknanya kita masih siasat siapa pembekal dia lah. In a separate case, ACP Adzli said police arrested an Indonesian man for being in possession of 31 bottles of katum water and a black plastic bag containing 5.5 kilograms of katum leaves in a house at Kampung Gua Prahu, Junyang Gurun in Kedah. Police also arrested a 27-year-old local man for possessing 110 packets of powdered and slabs of compressed heroin, 11 packets of shabu and ganja weighing 53.55 grams in a house at Taman Sri Utama on 26 September. Well, coming up, government to support digital industry startups. Stay with us. Now, Malaysia must welcome the digital industry and develop young talents in new technology like artificial intelligence and robotics while moving towards the digitalization of services in tandem with the developed world. And according to Communications and Multimedia Minister Gobin Singh Dio, in line with the current demands of all economic sectors, the government will provide financial assistance to digital application designers and startup ventures to enable the country to progress rapidly and relevantly. Jadi saya sekarang sebagai menteri, saya mengambil pendekatan uh, uh, di mana saya ini I reach out kepada industri ini. Kerana saya nak tahu apakah masalah mereka. Saya nak tahu bagaimana kita dalam kerajaan Pakatan uh, Harapan dalam Malaysia Baru ini kita boleh uh, bekerjasama dengan industri ini supaya kita boleh bawa ke depan industri ini. Kita tidak ada masa. Industri ini uh, adalah industri yang membangun secara pesat. Gobin was speaking to the media at the sidelines of the My Digital Make a Fair 2018 in Bukit Jalil, Kuala Lumpur yesterday. He said amongst the ministry's main efforts to develop the industry is to ensure equal access to the internet for both urban and rural folks and education on digital literacy. Almost 150 billion devices are expected to be connected to Internet of Things or IoT by 2030, opening new business opportunities to telecoms and security service providers. Now, the telecoms market is forecasted to grow by 84% and reach 4.3 trillion US dollars in 2030, while computer services are expected to reach 5.9 trillion US dollars and 122% growth. According to Euromonitor International's new research, 
high-tech goods. Production value is expected to triple to reach 16 trillion US dollars in 2030, driven by emerging IoT solutions, creating more effective production networks by combining physical devices and systems to interconnected networks. Its senior industry analyst, Justina Luima, explains that this shift towards more internet-enabled products, dubbed IoT, refers to a virtual network connecting things, people and devices. He adds that IoT is set to be pivotal technology in the Industry 4.0 revolution and is expected to be the most impactful technological advancement for businesses over the next five years. The Selangor Water Management Board and the Selangor Drainage and Irrigation Department will undergo a review to determine the quality of services they render. According to Selangor Minister Bazaar Amirud Njari, the focus will be on the perennial problem of river pollution owing to human negligence and the lack of proper attention. Amirudin also proposed stricter penalties for the culprits who continue to pollute the rivers. Uh, sebelum ini banyak uh, kesalahan-kesalahan itu di, di bawah akta alam sekitar dan sudah pasti di bawah jawatan alam sekitar untuk mendakwa mereka. Namun uh, mungkin kita boleh menilai semula, mungkin kita boleh memberikan sedikit uh, kuasa dan juga dan 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 uh, hukuman melalui uh, perubahan enakmen terhadap kesalahan-kesalahan yang melibatkan pencemaran air kerana efeknya sangat besar. Amit Rudin was speaking after launching the Saint level celebrations of the World Rivers Day 2018 at the Off River Storage ORS in Kampong Hangtua, Besari Jaya, Selangor yesterday. He added that ORS was an example of how the state was preparing for a possible water shortage in view of the impending El Nino weather phenomenon. The Malacca state government will increase the number of flights to Indonesia and Thailand in its effort to strengthen the economic development of the Indonesia-Malaysia-Thailand Growth Triangle IMTGT. Malacca Chief Minister Adli Zahari said IMTGT is a sub-regional cooperation initiative formed in 1993 by the governments of Indonesia, Malaysia and Thailand to accelerate economic and social transformation in less developed provinces. Kita mempunyai satu insentif lima tahun dari segi uh, uh, cukai uh, ataupun uh, charge uh, penumpang ini. Jadi kita akan gunakan insentif lima tahun kita ini untuk kita memulakan uh, penerbangan kita ke uh, Indonesia dan juga ke Thailand. Jadi kalau saya yakin bahawa dalam tahun ini juga kita akan uh, mempertingkatkan lagi hubungan itu. Adli said the Malacca government will upgrade the runway at the Malacca International Airport in Batu Berendam as part of efforts to strengthen cooperation between the three neighbours. The Malaysian government is ready to send a humanitarian mission to help quake victims in Palu in Sulawesi, Indonesia. And Deputy Foreign Minister Dato Marzuki Yahya said they are now discussing with Wisma Putra on the times of aid and assistance needed. Jadi kita sedang proses untuk memantau tentang keadaan yang terkini. Dan saya difahamkan bahawa keadaan bertambah buruk. Jadi kita sama-sama lah kita doakan supaya benda ini dapat selesai dengan sebaik mungkin. Dan kemudian barulah kita akan atur dari segi soal bantuan macam mana yang kita kena buat untuk nak membantu. Dato Marzuki said his ministry is also monitoring the situation in Sulawesi from the Malaysian ambassador and consul general there. And with that item, we conclude this afternoon's edition of News On 2. And our top story, death toll in Indonesia quake tsunami soars to 832 and expected to rise further. Well, News On 2 will come on again at 7 this evening with more updates. Till then, I'm Amin Carlos and thank you for watching.